let's talk about galactose metabolism. So here we've got galactose in its straight chain form and over here in its cyclic form. So let's think about the cyclic form first, okay? So the cyclic form, and of course they're in equilibrium here, as we can see these equilibrium arrows. So we've got the, the uh, alpha D-galactose here. The first thing that's gonna happen is that we're gonna convert that into galactose 1-phosphate. And that's going to be done by galactokinase. Galactokinase, that name should make sense. It's acting on galactose. Uh, it's, it's acting as a kinase. It's adding a phosphate to carbon number one. Um, and that phosphate is coming from ATP specifically. So now we've got galactose 1-phosphate. Now that galactose 1-phosphate is going to be turned into glucose 1-phosphate. So the only difference between those two molecules is what's going on at carbon number four, right? These guys are basically epimers, okay? Um, and so that's gonna be done by an enzyme called GALT, or galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase. Okay, so the gal and then the, the T comes from the transferase parts. Now it's a uridyl transferase. So specifically what's going on here is that um, this galactose portion is being uh, replaced by the glucose portion coming from UDP, okay? So this glucose and this galactose kind of switch spots, okay? And then what we end up with is the glucose up here with the 1-phosphate and the galactose over here attached to UDP, okay? So that's what GALT does. Now, just so you have a better visual, scroll down here real quick. So this is what UDP glucose looks like, it's just the UDP portion here, the colored portion, and this is glucose. And over here it's UDP galactose, UDP is the same, the galactose there, uh, of course, is different only at carbon number four. Okay, so that's just the visual. I couldn't fit it all on the same page, so uh, I drew it down there to just to show you what each of those actually looks like. Okay, but that's the reaction there catalyzed by GALT. Okay, so now we've got glucose 1-phosphate. And this glucose 1-phosphate, this is a molecule that we've actually seen before. Okay, so I mentioned before that when it comes to the metabolism of galactose and fructose, we turn them into glycolytic intermediates. And so with this um, galactose, once we turn it into a glucose 1-phosphate, we can very easily turn it into glucose 6-phosphate, which is actually a glycolytic intermediate. Um, and we do that with phosphoglucose mutase or phosphoglucomutase, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then that glucose 6-phosphate can go through the rest of glycolysis and eventually give pyruvate, and we get some ATP out of that. Okay, and of course the pyruvate can be broken down further um, to the pyruvate, in the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex to give acetyl-CoA, and acetyl-CoA can be oxidized in the uh, TCA cycle, yada, 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 okay? Um, and uh, also, this a lot of this happens in the liver, um, and I think it's to some extent in the kidney as well. Um, not sure about that, but definitely in the liver. The liver does so many things. Um, if it happens in gluconeogenic tissues, the glucose 6-phosphate can, of course, be converted into glucose um, by glucose 6-phosphatase um, in those gluconeogenic tissues. Okay, 